Hey guys, it's me, my face. Questionable lighting. Today's happy dance brought to us by coffee because I had two drinks with dinner. Today is February the 14th, so if you practice or celebrate uh, St. Valentine's Day, happy Valentine's Day. If you don't, happy Sunday. If you're new here, my name is Andrea and this is a channel about cross-stitching and hopefully at some point English paper piecing and coffee, alcohol, cats, my opinions, sometimes a little more alcohol, sometimes a few more of my opinions. If you're a returning visitor, welcome back. You know all this stuff. I'm actually recording very late Sunday night. Well, very late for me. It's almost eight o'clock. Um, we had a lovely Valentine's Day today. Uh, we went out and I bought myself a new stitchy chair. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's going to be on anybody's website, but if I can find a picture of it, I will put it here. But it's not going to be delivered until March, but I can wait. Sure, I can wait. Um, then we went over to a local kind of sports wear store um, called... It, actually, we went to Bob's Furniture, and then we went to Bob's sportswear something it was a big day of the bobs uh did a little shopping over there and now we have just come home about an hour ago from dinner which was lovely it's been a nice day but now it's time to record i also apologize i think my lighting is a little off tonight because my phone was actually down to 30 something percent and i was waiting for it to charge up before i could record and finally I gave up, so I'm using the phone with the charging cord, but that means I don't have my little LED ring light up. Uh, so we'll see if this is better, worse. One way or another, we'll get through it. We've managed to live through a plague. We'll get through this. Let's start with the whips, shall we? The first thing I worked on is my Prairie Schooler. This is Double Double. And this is getting ready to go into a timeout. I know. Uh, last week I was all excited with how much I had managed to do. And this week I realized how I was able to stitch so quickly. Because apparently I wasn't counting anything. Anything. My witch is somehow in the wrong place. So I've kind of fudged her. And then when I got down here, I found that the cauldron is kind of not how it's supposed to be. So I'm going to try to come down this way and do the other witch correctly and see where she ends up and then see what needs to be adjusted to get the others in. Because that cauldron, I'm not picking that out. This is over one on like 30 something mystery even way. I, I'm not. I will start over before I pick this out. Seriously. On the other hand though, look how good that snake looks. That snake is so cool. That alone is worth stitching this thing. The next thing that I worked on is Templar Prophecy. This is from Long Dog Samplers. I didn't do much in way of, it was not very interesting. I really just filled in some of his body here. Um, I mean, the big sections of fill-in need to be done just as much as the detail needs to be done. It's just boring. Um, sometimes and sometimes you know it's it's one of those things that it's boring and yet at the same time I have trouble just phasing out and stitching the big block of color because it does have very definite you know edges and where it needs to go and you know I get distracted easy by you know shiny thing squirrel um, so yeah so I really just 
I worked on it one night. I got some chunk of color done and I really didn't look at it again this week. Sorry, Templar Prophecy. I gotta get moving on this. The last thing that I worked on is actually a new start. I know, seriously. I have been wanting to stitch this for the longest time and actually forgot I had it until I was going through some uh, PDFs that I had on my PC. I actually, I finally watched the video for Pattern Keeper that shows you how to set the grids on, you know, patterns that aren't necessarily done as text so that you can still use them in Pattern Keeper. You can't necessarily like search for a symbol, but you can get all the grid lines and mark things off and finally figured it out. So I went looking for things I could work on. And I found this is uh, United We Stand by Teresa Kogut. And look at how much I did. I know it's scary for me to say, look how much I've done because God knows if it's right, but I'm hoping it's right. Um, but yeah, that's like two days of stitching or two stitching sessions, let's say. And it's really been working up fast. I love the colors. I love, look at the flag. Look at just, you know, I try to design things and you know, I'm, you know, look at just two hands holding a flag there. How just simply, I love this pattern. It's so simple. It's so well done. It's so good. It's going to look so good when it's done. This is picture this plus hazy gray in 18 count Ada. And it has been just a breeze to work on. So I hope to get that done God, at this rate, probably in the next few weeks. Let's hope. So that's all the actual stitching I have done in the past week. Um, oh, I did get some haul. Hold, please. I got just a little bit of haul. I actually ordered from... Uh, Shakespeare's Peddler, uh, Kitten Stitcher, Teresa Vinette. She's all those people. She's sassy. She has so many aliases. Um, but she showed this book in her last video, which is the Sampler Company's Ultimate Sampler Motif Source Book. This is by Brenda Keys. And I love it. I love it. I mean, part of... Sometimes the problems that I have with trying to design something, even just for myself, is I don't always know where to start. You know, I know I want a person, but I don't know quite how I want to lay them out and everything. So this has like just pages of people that I can start with and then I can decide the colors. I can change them up. It's got, you know, pages of houses, things like this is very cool. Um, I think I just flipped by a whole bunch of pumpkins. You know, you know what I would do with pumpkins. Um, you know, berry bowls. Berry bowls are, are big right now. And if I, you know, get a pattern and it has a motif in there that I'm not necessarily thrilled with, I could swap it out with something in here and know, you know, that it's just going to look right. It's going to look normal rather than if I try to design it, and it looks like a three-year-old did it. So I got that. I also managed to get two more of the colors that I needed to start uh, CD Pumpkin Cottage. That brings me down to, I think, just nine that I'm looking for. Um, one of them, I did get a notification from 123 Stitch that one of them was in, but it's just not worth buying one uh, I don't have an LNS that I can go to and pick up one or two at a time or anything like that. So I have to try to get them as many as I can in one place at one time. I also got myself a new package of needles because you can never have too many needles. I bought 26s. These are 26 Bowens. I have a needle that I've been using, no lie, probably for a year and a half now. And it's what I think is a 26, 
it, it's definitely bigger and, and heavier than a 28. I don't think it's a 24 because the 24s that I have, I mean, they look like dots for goodness sakes. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that whatever brand it is or whatever kind it is, it's a 26. But no matter what brand of 26s I get, they're all smaller than this needle that I've been using. I don't know. It'll get used. We'll figure it out. But it's lasted me a year and a half. Maybe it'll give me another year and a half. Who knows? Now we have something a little weird to talk about. Last week in my video, I did a giveaway for um, Lori Holt bringing home the tree. Now usually when I do a giveaway, I get like 10 or 12 entries, generally. This week I got two. And I just thought that was really low. But I didn't get any messages from anybody or any comments that said anybody was having trouble putting their name in. And I went through the link in the description and filled out a record of my own and my entry went through without a problem. So I don't know, did people have an issue putting in your name or was nobody just really interested in this pattern, which is fine. I just, I just want to make sure that I don't give this away today and have people come up and say, well, you know, I didn't see my name on the list of people, but I, I entered in and now, you know, I didn't get a chance at the pattern. If something like that happens, I mean, obviously I can just, I can find something else to give away. We're, we're going to have giveaways at some point, but I want to make sure that everything's working as it should be. With that said, you should be seeing the video of me um, choosing the winner between the two people whose entries I have. Uh, the third name on that list, that HHH, that was me. That was my little test one. So the the only two actual entries were on row two and three. So that's what I put into the ra uh, random number generator was a number, you know, two between two and three. And as you can see, it came up with number two and that belongs to Science Knitster. I believe I'm saying that correctly. Um, I will comment on your comment, but you were kind enough to give me your address when you filled out the form. So I will just get this in the mail to you as soon as I can. I do need to run it to the post office. I can't just uh, put it out in my mailbox. So it may take me some time this week to go do that. I have a plan to leave the house on Wednesday, so that may be our day. So congratulations, Science Knitster. If you put in your name for this and didn't see it on my list, let me know. Um, and I will see what went wrong. So I had asked last week if anybody was interested in seeing my little pile of shame, which is not that little of a pile anymore. These are projects that I have finished but have never fully finished. Most of which I totally could have fully finished if I just, you know, did it. But let's see what I've got. So these are in no particular order. They're definitely not in the order that I finished them in. They're more in the order of I yanked them out of the closet in kind of a pile and I put them in some sort of, they're not in any particular order. This is Whispered by the Wind. This is Wizard's Gate. That pattern was gifted to me by Laura, my stitchy godmother. And I loved stitching this. I loved stitching this. Also, you can see that I did not, I did not iron. Sorry. Um, I finished this I don't know how long ago. I went so far as to order a frame, like a custom made frame, just for this. I have it. It's down in the side room. 
perfectly preserved in the box that it came in. The box has never been opened. I really think this wants to be framed. For no other reason than it's holding up like an entire piece of fabric that I could be using for something amazing. I don't even remember. I don't have the sticker. If I if I can find it, you may be seeing it over here. What this fabric is? It's uh, it's nice. It's linen. It's very nice. That's just hanging out in the closet. The next one I have is this is Edgar Allan Poe Nevermore. This was put out by Witchy Stitcher, and I think I found out about this in the uh, Stitcher's Coven. I think on Facebook, you know, back when I actually went on Facebook, um, you know, willingly. He came out so good. I just don't know what to do with him. Um, a couple of people suggested I frame him and hang him in the bathroom, which is not the worst idea I've heard. Not the worst idea I've heard. Um, it's just like, I, I, I don't want him hanging in my living room. I don't think I would really mind him hanging in here, but I feel like, I don't know. I, I, I almost would rather have him made into a project bag. I think that would be kind of cool, but I don't even use project bags that much anymore. So I just don't want him to go to waste, you know, as opposed to how he's going to waste sitting in a pile in my closet, never seeing the light of day. You get me. This is the Town of Halloween from Primitive Hair. And I loved working on this. And it came out so cute. And I wanted this for a long time. I know it was in a magazine at some point and I didn't realize that she had ever kind of released it on its own. And so then when I found it, I was very excited. But again, look, look at the piece of fabric that it is holding up. This is that mystery linen that I think ended up being like an upholstery linen that I found at the, at Savers and it coffee tea dyed really nicely and it was easy to stitch on and you could see how nice this looks. I haven't done anything with it. Not a darn thing. But it looks good. This one is Suffragette. It is from Little House Needleworks. You can see how cute it came out. Those bricks, those bricks are everything. I believe that is, I want to say it's uh, Classic Color Works um, Cherry Cobbler, I think. I love how this came out. I love her dress. I love everything about it. It belongs in a frame. I think it lends itself to being in a frame. It's not in a frame. It's sitting in my closet. It is on what I think is your everyday linen, like that you get at Joann's or Michael's, or you used to be able to get at Joann's or Michael's. They never seem to have fabric anymore. Um, but yeah, coffee, tea dyed it myself, came out really nice. Look at all that, all that fabric being held up. I gotta pull myself together. Dante, you're standing on the things. D Dante, you're standing on all the things. J no, you're standing the things. Please. The things. You're standing on them. You Okay, that's... Bye now. <sighs> the Primitive Hair put out a series of freebies for uh, all the days that happen through the wheel of the year. And I have managed to actually finish Yule, like fully finish. That is actually a little pillow ornament. And I have finished um, Samhain as a flat, just a flat piece. It's not even like a flat fold, but that is at least fully finished. The rest of them are here. So we have in bulk, Maybon, uh, 
have Ostara, Beltane or Beltana, Lamas, and Letha. They're adorable. They should be somewhere. They should be displayed in a dough bowl on a shelf. Nope, they're just in here. That was all rando coffee tea dyed um, Ada. Probably started out as 16 or 18 count. Heaven only knows what count it is now. This is the Good Witch Sampler from Sub Rosa. I actually think this may have been one of the first things that I stitched out of um, Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine, which I love. I love having that subscription. And she's so cute. I have no idea what I plan to do with her. I don't have a plan. If I had a plan, I'd have done it. No plan. That's why so many of these are definitely going to end up in a stitchy journal. One, because stitchy journals are the best idea that anybody ever had. And also because I don't think I can handle having these just floating around anymore. I need to do something with them. This is actually a pattern that I designed. It was, I could not get myself a copy of, I believe it is Salem Remembered from the Primitive Needle. So I kind of made my own with the names of the people murdered during the witch trials in Salem. And I'm really pleased with how it came out. And you know what? When I ordered a very special frame for Wizard's Gate, I ordered one for this too. It's down there. It's ready. Make me go open the box, somebody. Make me go open the box. This is also my own design. Um, again, I could not get a hold of um, which is Hollow from Primitive Needle. So I kind of made my own. This is Halloween Haven. Halloween Haven. And so I kind of just did my own little Halloween scene. This is so cute. I, I really like this. I really think it's cute. Um, I think my one of my favorite things is this little dog. And he's dressed up as a ghost and he's walking around behind the kids. And there is more than a little bit of glow in the dark thread in here. If I can find an old picture of it under the black light, I'll put it up here. But so cute. Would look lovely out at Halloween. Nope, just sitting in the closet. Dante's walking by, stepping on all the things again. Would you, could you, could you, just could you? Could you not? Oh, could you? Could you not? Come on. Hop down. Wait, no. <laughs> now she's... Now she's sitting on the things in the... Can I help you? <sighs> this is the Haunted Mansion. This was from Tiny Modernist. And I was so happy with how this came out. So happy. But I was also so happy to be done with it that I just stuck it in the closet and forgot it existed. I don't even know what I want to do with that. I don't know if it needs to be framed. I don't know if it should be maybe stretched over a canvas. I don't know. But it's done. This is a very recent finish. This is Rackstack from Plum Street Samplers. And again, love how it came out. Not a clue what I want to do with it. Um, but it is holding up a large amount of fabric, which could be used for other things. This is actually a really cute little freebie. 
from um, Primitive Needle. This is by The Light of the Moon. And yeah, that is over one. So it's tiny. It should be easy for me to finish it into something. I haven't. Sharing Space is, this is a Barbara Anna. Who is this? This is called Witch Ride. And I believe, I believe we also used the hashtag Tiny Rider for this because it's a tiny person riding a mouse. Over one. So cute. This also, I believe, was in Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Back in the closet it goes. And the last little pile of finishes that have never been fully finished are my Prairie Schoolers. So we have, this is, I believe, Night Flight. We have Misfortune. This is Knock Knock. Who's there? And then the one that I am working on now is Double Double. I'm pretty sure that these are going to end up in the Stitchy Journal. Because even though I endeavored to do them on similar fabrics, you can kind of tell that in the course of coffee tea dyeing and whatnot, like those are completely different sizes. Let me just see what you can see here. You know, this one is a lot taller and skinnier. This one is much more square. If I hold this one up next to Miss Fortune, you can definitely tell that there is a difference here. Miss Fortune is much more squared off. I think this is probably the one that's closest to how it's supposed to look. But yeah, they're all over the place. So I think they need to go in a section of their own in a nice stitchy journal. And that's about it. So that is my pile of shame. It, um, it didn't take quite as long as I thought it would take. But, you know, the fact that I have them at all kind of bothers me. I mean, we all have things that we haven't gotten to yet to fully finish. But I don't know. These are just, I, I, I'm actually kind of careful about what I stitch because I don't want to stitch something that doesn't have a place in my house that I kind of wouldn't want on my walls, almost like, like Edgar Allan Poe. I, I did that one because I really like the subject matter, but not necessarily that I want it hanging on my walls. But for the most part, you know, I want these things displayed. I just never seem to get to do anything with them. Um, so if you were looking at any of these and can think of a really cool um, finishing idea for any of them, I would love to hear it down below. Otherwise, I think a lot of these smaller ones are going to end up in the Stitchy Journal, you know, when I get around to starting it. I own it. I have it. It's right over there. I just haven't done anything with it yet. I think that's about it for me this week. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your likes and even your dislikes. And thank you so much for your comments. I read every single one of them, and they mean the world to me, as do you. Thank you for being my community. Bye, guys.